Hello everybody, my name is Craig Bennett, and today I'm going to get into a video on how to have it where if a device connects to your Google Home Wi-Fi and uh, you want it to broadcast out through the speakers as long as you got smart things and whatever, then this will work for you. And on top of that, if, if you got a Wi-Fi router that actually connects or has ability to connect and work with IFTTT, then this will also work with you and I should show you fairly easily so say for example if i um like i got a phone on side of me and i'm coming home and my phone will automatically connect to the wi-fi area and when that happens this will play through my speakers craig the second is home and let's just say for example that i um you know i leave obviously my phone will be next to me so when the phone goes outside of the range then it will disconnect and this will happen. Craig the second is away. Now, as far as that goes, um, you might have heard me say something about smart things. Yes, we are going to use that for this. And the reason why I'm not going to be dealing with the fob, the key fob that Samsung itself sells, is two things. One, the battery life is just absolute trash. And the second is a lot of people in the reviews. I had had to fob in my hand but a lot of reviews say it does not work half the time and the fact is is as long as the phone does connect to the wi-fi or does disconnect then it it works in this case um one thing i will note is this method when the phone connects to the wi-fi in my experience there might be like a minute maybe a two minute delay sometimes a little bit more sometimes a lot less but um, when the disconnect happens, there tends to be some type of delay. Um, I hadn't exactly timed it, but I, I, I feel if it feels like about somewhere within the 30 seconds to five minutes. And in some cases, it could be a little bit longer than that. It, it depends on how often the thing checks itself. So that's something to note. Um, as far as I know, there's no way to for, for us to fix that, but I, I don't know. But as far as that, this goes, um, you will need to have smart things running. And I'll leave a link down below to this on how to get this running on a different video. Uh, I, I don't want to go through all the steps and how to get it to work with your smart things. Um, as far as the um, cast web API, because I've already done a video on that. So I showed how to turn motion detectors into a doorbell, same principle. The only difference is from that video to here is the code itself. As far as when you're installing this on your computer, it has a graphic user interface and um, it's fairly simple. You just download that and run with it. it. I mean, it's actually a lot more streamlined when it comes to that. So that's, you know, props off of that. But um, as far as everything else, when it comes to the uh, the, the system, the back end of smart things, that's pretty much the same. So as far as that goes, once you got that running, good. So from there, what you need to do is you need to, first off um, on smart things, is you need to have a trigger uh that this is a virtual switch so for each device that you want to look at uh, make sure that there is a virtual uh, switch and make sure that all that is linked up to your ifttt so you can control it from there so when it connects it turns your virtual switch on when it disconnects it will turn it off and <clears throat> well from there um i'll leave a link down below to this uh, once you got everything set up, go to it. And um, there's two things you can do if you're just connecting, if, if you're just dealing with one device, one device on and that same device off, and that's all you care about is that one device, then I'll, I'll leave a link down below to my published stuff. But if um, you have many devices, unfortunately, um, how IFTTT works is you're going to have to make an applet per thing, but it's actually fairly easy. Once you make them one, you can copy. I'll show you. So go to new and what you want to do 
is first things first is search your Wi-Fi router. If um, you don't use Google Home or Google Wi-Fi, then search it, see if it's there. If it, if it is, then great. Um, so first thing is device connect, and then go down to add action, smart things, and then do a turn on, a switch on, and then just name it whatever. So, you know, do, you know, whatever. Uh, obviously make it sure that you can actually read it. This is just for demonstration purposes. So from there, uh, save it. And if you go here, this is all private, none, none of it's public. Uh, if you go here, you can actually go and enable it and then do all the settings uh, on here uh, so it works. Again, it's not public, so you, if you link this to someone else, it, it, they might not be able to see it uh, because it's all private, so just keep that one in mind. And again, one of the problems with IFTTT is you're going to have to have a per a applet, per device. And in fact, you're going to have to have two because of the off and then uh, one for off, one for on. So in this case, uh, what we're going to do is if you want to do a second device, again, with the connections, that we can do a copy and it brings us back here with all the fields set same as before. Just go down to the bottom, you know, edit whatever the title, and then do a save, and, and there you go. And, um, you know, that's as simple as that, and then just do that. It's go to your, and, and hook up your next device. Now, let's just say, for example, that you want to do a disconnect. Um, it's fairly simple. It's just it's the same thing, just switch to disconnect and switch off and, and you know, go from there. And, uh, you know, it's it's pretty straightforward. So, and if you made a mistake, you can just do a delete or whatever. It's uh, pretty straightforward when it comes to that. Now, as far as the uh, web core, the big thing to note there is, uh, again, you're going to have to have that hooked up. But um, what you need to do is make sure that the virtual switches that the this the IFTTT controls is shown within here so you can go from there now as far as that goes um once you have that all set up what you can do is go to and do an if statement and and from there is um you can actually set up a time so i'll show you how to do that in a second um go to condition and by the way for physical device uh just do that and, and you can do the own offer there but for time, so say for example, um, you got a little kid and uh, you got a uh, Google Home speaker in the same room that the kid's sleeping in. Well, obviously you don't want to have that thing go off if there's a scheduled time. So what you would just simply do is you would have it where the um, the uh, set the time and say in between you know whatever 5 a.m to whatever 9 30 p.m and then just do a simple add and um you can also do a else statement and and go and and set your other scenario up so i can say go ahead and play in whatever rooms at this time when it's outside that time i can set up a separate one to say which rooms not to play it in so that's a big thing notes um but as far as that goes what you will need is to make sure that your devices can access the actual url um you know it could be local it could be whatever but the big thing is is it, it needs to be able to access the url um so you know Make sure to go from there and make sure that you have the proper devices from there. At this point, you know, save it and do whatever, test it out, and, um, and you're good to go. Now, if you're wondering how to make the MP3 files, uh, one of the best ways I found is to use, in fact, I'll leave a link down below so you can actually use this, but uh, just basically write out whatever. Make sure that if you want spaces, commas, stuff like that, 
helps quite a bit but do a create a audio file when it's done just right click do save as and that will do that and uh, make sure that you test it out um again th this is uh this particular site is a is a hit or miss when problems happen um it you know does a lot of good or whatever but it is free so note that and in my opinion has a little bit better than the others um so note that now if you want that um beep sound so this craig the sec that that beep sound at the very beginning just simply go on um google and just search for you know technology sounds or whatever it may be uh mp3s and and go from there that particular one is just a walkie talkie sound so just go from there but anyways as far as that goes that's pretty much it and um you know again test it out see if it works and whatever you know fix bugs and whatever and um as far as that goes if you got any questions anything else then feel free to leave that in the comment section and i'll see you next video have a great day also feel free to check out the patreon and whatnot